In this episode of Restore It, I'm going to remove this aftermarket tow bar mod and repair the damage. Remove the remaining rust from the bodywork in preparation for the respray, make this corner look more like this corner, prepare the door jams, bumpers and wing mirrors for new paint, and attempt to fix the newly found damage inside of the boot. To begin with, I'm going to remove all of the spots of surface rust from the right hand side door jams. The clips that hold the trim onto the A-pillar go directly onto the paint from factory, which scratches the paint and causes rust over time. I wonder if BMW still do this today. To reach an awkward spot like this, I'm using the finger sander and the mini disc sander with 36 grit sanding pads. With all of the rust gone, I can see one or two spots towards the front of the seal that will need welding but we'll come to those once I start repairing them properly. I would normally protect all of the bare metal with zinc primer, but I'm going to leave these for now because I'm going to spray epoxy primer over all of the areas I've repaired so far in the next episode once the interior is fully masked off and all of the zinc primer has been removed. So with no more rust to deal with, I can prep the paint for the respray using the SP sanding pads I got from Safe Products Limited. Thankfully, I can use the smaller DA for the lower and middle sections as this is such a long and tiring task. I don't know how painters do this all of the time. Factoring in the rust removal and the sanding, it took me around two hours to finish these two right side door jams. But now, at least I'm left with a clean, rust-free and keyed surface, ready for some epoxy primer and then it's off to the painters for the rest. Before I move around to the boot jam, I want to quickly tell you about keeps and how they're helping men to keep the hair they have and even regrow the hair they've lost. Keeps is a convenient online subscription service that makes it easy and more affordable for men to treat their male pattern baldness from the comfort of their own home. Whether you're looking to prevent hair loss, stimulate hair growth or just take better care of the hair you have, Keeps has you covered. Their treatments are clinically proven to address hair loss and boost hair regrowth. Keeps treatment plans are affordable, typically half the cost of pharmacy prices, and you can get expert care for hair loss without ever visiting a medical professional office or pharmacy, as the treatments are delivered right to your door in discreet non-branded packaging. To get started, just complete an online consultation to get matched with a treatment plan unique to your needs, recommended by a licensed medical practitioner. Most Keeps customers notice results within six months of starting treatment. To date, they have helped nearly one million men to keep their hair and have over 5,000 five-star reviews. Thanks to Keeps for sponsoring this video and for the free product, Hair Loss Stops with Keeps. To get up to 50% off a three-month plan, go to keeps.com forward slash restore it or click the link in the video description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash restore it. Let's get back to the touring. Before I can key the paint in the boot jam, the lock, latch and reservoir hose need to come out. Because I'm going to be doing some welding back here, I'm removing this carpet and the spare wheel to prevent them from getting damaged. As I was doing so, I noticed some damage on the bottom of the spare wheel well. Someone must have used this as a jacking point in the past. This will definitely need looking at, but we'll come back to it later on in the episode. After reading your comments from the last episode, a few of you were kind enough to help me get this reservoir hose off. The middle section simply lifts out the top, which leaves a larger than I have sized plastic allen head piece that twists off. I'm going to have to use some pliers to gently grip the outside and twist it around. And with that off, I can now remove the rubber hose that goes to the reservoir. And now the boot jam is ready to be keyed for paint. But before I do that, I want to get rid of this questionable modification, starting with these four bolts. With those out of the way, I found out where this cable goes. It's spliced into one of the rear lights with clips that attach over the original loom. They sort of turn one wire into two at the cost of cutting the insulation of both. To remove it, I need to push the cable through this hole and then pull it through the one inside of the boot. Now I can remove the five clips and get rid of anything that's not needed. These wires will need to be cut, soldered, heat shrinked and wrapped in tessa tape, but I'll do that in a coming episode. 
Now that everything has been stripped off of the tail panel, I can remove all of the surface rust on the lower section. Well, there was quite a lot of it, but now that it's all gone, I can protect it for now with zinc primer, as spraying here won't fill the car with overspray. This section is now ready for epoxy primer and a bit of filler to smooth it out. Now that this section is in primer, I can really see the damage on this corner, which we will get to in this episode. But first, I want to remove the holes that were drilled for the tow bar. And before I can do that, I need to remove the wiring loom that's running alongside them. One, so I don't melt it, and two, so I can get the finger sander in to prep the inside of the holes. With all six holes prepped on both sides and ready for welding, I can mark each hole onto paper and then make them from metal. As these aren't the most complicated pieces to make, I'll skip that part and get straight to the welding. Annoyingly, just as I finished the first hole, I started to get very low on gas. So these welds just get worse and worse, but I got there in the end. With these five done, I'm going to leave this one on the inside until the new gas arrives, as it was getting really hard to weld by the last hole on the tail panel. However, this will give me the opportunity to switch to Argon 5 instead of Argon 15, which should only improve things. Now I can protect these repairs with primer and call that job 90% done. With a bit of filler and primer in the coming episode, it'll be like that tow bar mod never happened. With that final hole on hold for now, I'm going to carry on and prepare the boot jam and tail panel for paint. Apart from a good clean and some filler, the boot jam and tail panel are now ready for paint. As for what is technically the rear right quarter panel, this corner has definitely had a bump at one point, so I'm going to use these dollies and a hammer to try and mould it into a more factory shape. This is definitely going to take some hammering. After the first pass, it's definitely looking better and more like the other side. The main kink is mostly gone, but I still think it needs more, especially around the top and bottom edges. Now it feels almost identical to the other side. I think that's going to do it. With that done, I can now remove the surface rust around the damage and inside where the bumper sits on the rear quarter panels. The brackets that the bumper mounts attached to are covered in surface rust and require almost all of the air tools I have to de-rust. With all of the rust gone, I can clean the area with panel wipe and protect them for now. It's not 100% perfect, but that corner is now looking much better and I think the bumper will fit a little bit better now that both sides are even. I'm also doing the same to the other side, which isn't as bad. So that's the rear of the car ready for epoxy primer and filler and that terrible mod unmodded. Moving around to the left of the car, I can now prep the left side door jams for paint. I'm skipping about 99% of this as it's a lot of the same thing and it takes an unbelievable amount of time to do. There are still a few bungs to remove as well as the A-pillar interior trim. With those off, I can get to where the trim clips were sitting and remove the final spots of surface rust inside both door jams.
With that done, I can now go over all of the spots the DA can't get to with the SP sanding pads. I know I keep saying it, but this really is a huge amount of work. Sanding the body took so many hours of filming that I could have spent elsewhere, but I thought it would be good to just get it done now whilst I'm waiting for more gas. And although it is a lot of work, this is what the surface looks like once it's done. All of the imperfections have been flattened along with the clear coat, ready for new paint. Any spots that are showing the e-coating or bare metal will be covered in epoxy primer which will also be flattened in the same way. This will make for a really nice paint job inside and out. With the left side door jams done, I'm moving around to the apron which has a little bit of surface rust that needs removing, mainly around the holes for the window wiper motors. With the rust gone, I can rub the apron down, leaving the front windscreen in for now, as I'm hoping to have it out next episode. So after many, many hours, this is most of the paint prep on the chassis done. I still need to remove all of the zinc primer and replace it with epoxy primer, prep that to the same level and prep underneath the windscreen once it's been removed. The two doors I'm keeping are done, but I will need to prep the two I'm replacing once I find them. The front and rear bumpers need to be repaired and prepped for paint, much like the chassis. But before I can do that, I need to strip them of their parts, starting with the front. With everything off, I thought I would clean it on the workbench, but there's so much dirt trapped inside the small slits that run along the entire thing, that I think I'm going to clean them outside with the jet wash. Moving on to the rear bumper, this one is damaged in multiple ways. The brackets are bent from the broken bolt fiasco, and the fiberglass section on the inside is quite badly cracked. To remove it, I need to tap out these plastic rivets and press down on one of these tabs to free it from the outer section. With that out, I can now remove the rusty brackets that the bumper shocks sit inside of. As you can see, the damage on this fiberglass piece is pretty bad. I'm going to attempt to fix it during the next episode, but if it doesn't go to plan, I'll be looking for a new one. With both bumpers now free of parts, I can give them a proper clean using some soap and the jet wash. Now clean and dry, I can prep the paint just like I did on the chassis. That's the rear one done, and the same goes for the front. So that's both bumpers prepared for paint and all of the pieces ready to be repaired, both the outer sections and the inner pieces. Moving on to the wing mirrors, both of these are heavily corroded and will need to be repainted. To remove all of this corrosion and paint, I'm going to use the blasting cabinet. As these are made from aluminium and plastic, I've turned the pressure right down to make sure I don't damage them. With all of the paint removed, you can see just how pitted this aluminium bracket is. Before I send these off to the painters, I'm going to soak them in soapy water whilst moving the mirror on its hinge to make sure all of the media is out. So while they soak behind the scenes, I'm going to go back to the spare wheel well and see what I can do about this damage. So I can have a good look at the whole thing, I'm going to remove this vibration damping, which I'll replace with new stuff during the rebuild. With all of that gone, I can see some spots of rust, but nothing too bad. 
The worst of it is around the damage, so it'll be interesting to see just how deep that goes. Before I go any further, I'm going to remove any loose dirt and clean all of the old adhesive off with white spirit. With that done, I can now clearly see where the spots of rust are, and also the damage a bit clearer. To get things moving in the right direction, I'm going to use my soft-faced Thor hammer. With things a bit more level, I'm moving to the bodywork hammers to smooth out the bottom curve. After many hits with the hammer, it's looking a lot better, but it's not perfect. To get a better look, I'm going to remove the surface rust and then do a bit more work with the hammers. I'm still not 100% happy with the shape of this, so I think I'm going to come back to this once I start work on the underside of the car and I can see it from both sides. Maybe I'll remove the circle plate so I can get a dolly in from both sides. However, all of the rust has been removed from the inside and can now be protected for now. Does anyone know if there are specific colours for the panels on the inside of E30s? Is it just the body colour without clear coat on it, or is it a generic beige colour? Please do let me know in the comments if you know, as I've done some googling and can't find much on it. And with that slight improvement to the damage, that's everything I managed to get done for this episode. In the next episode I'm going to finish the tow bar removal, weld the front passenger footwell holes, swap all of the zinc primer for epoxy primer and get that front windscreen removed so I can prep the window frame and move on to more interesting things. So thanks very much for watching, bye for now.